All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the graph for your Huxlaw lab. If, uh, if you've done the simulation and you didn't change the spring constant when you came in, then you should have ended up with some data similar to this. Obviously, you could have hung different masses on it than I did, in which case, right, obviously your forces would be different and we'll know at the end whether yours worked out. But if you did these particular one, like if you did these exact masses, then you should have ended up with these forces um, and then you should have ended up with stretches that are similar, though maybe not exactly the same as that. So, uh, in order, however, mostly this is just to show you how to make the graph. So, what you want to do is highlight your forces and your stretches, and then you're going to go over here where it says insert chart, which is the third option from the left or from the right, sorry, and click that. Now it's going to come up with mine comes up with a scatter plot. So it just assumes that I want to make a scatter plot because I always want to make a scatter plot. However, right, yours might have chosen to make a bar graph or something. And so what you want to do is where it says scatter plot right here, you're going to go down and you're going to click scatter plot. Now the other in issue that I have right now is that stretch is on the on the vertical axis and force is on the horizontal axis. And I want it the other way around. I want forces to be over here and stretches to be over here. Now be careful because it doesn't always, um, right, it doesn't change the labels for you. So you gotta always be kind of paying attention to these numbers right here. So like I'm noting that my vertical axis goes between zero and 0 0.5. That pretty much matches the data that's in my stretch column, right? The stretch column goes between zero and 0 0.5 basically. Right. And then on the horizontal axis, I have uh, numbers that are between zero and three, basically, and that pretty much matches my forces. So don't, you know, don't pay as much attention to the labels because it, it just kind of throws them in there. Um, pay more attention to the numbers that are on your axes to tell you what data is actually being plotted on each axis. So to fix that, you can go, uh, we can go over here to where it says X axis and you can click where it says force. You can just change that to stretch. Um, and you should be able to do that as long as um, you had labels at the top of your of your data there. For a series, uh, we want to change that to force, so I'm just going to click there and I can change it to force. If for some reason that doesn't work for you, like you can see that it went ahead and changed the labels, right? Now it goes between 0 and 0.5 down here and 0 to 1 over here. If for some reason that, that didn't work, you can also click the, um, or if you have extra things, you can always click here and click remove. If there was like you know two things plotted on that axis, you would remove one of them. Uh, if for some reason that didn't seem to work or didn't give you that stretch option, if you click and then there's these this little like select data range, you can click there and then you can highlight the column that you want on there, the data that you want on that x-axis. And um, right, I could do the same here. I could click force and I could highlight you know the force data. So. Again, you only need to do that if for some reason it's not working the way that you want it to work. Uh, the other thing that I need to do now is change my labels because they're wrong, right? It says stretch, but this is the forces and this is force and this is. So you can actually just double click on it and you can type and then just change it. So stretch meters. And if for some reason that doesn't show up, uh, like you don't have that option, like maybe that didn't actually have a label there initially, um, you can click up here in the right corner, in the right corner, and you can click the three dots, and you can click Edit Chart. That brings back this menu. If and then you can click Customize, and then we're under Chart and Axis Titles. And right, so I I just fixed the horizontal axis title, but I could also fix the vertical axis title to be Forces. Right, that's in Newton's. Um, and while I'm here, I'm actually going to go ahead and change my chart, my total chart title. Uh, and I'm just going to change it to called, be called Hooke's Law. You can have it titled whatever you want. I don't care. Make sure that your, your axis titles are correct, meaning the stretch and the force is correct. But I don't really, you're, whatever you want to title your whole chart, that's fine. Okay, the last step that you need to do is you need to put on a, uh, a best fit line. And so we're gonna go under series. You're gonna scroll down until you find trend line. So you're gonna click that. That's gonna add a linear trend line because it's a linear graph. 
and then you're going to go down here where it says label and you're going to change it to use equation and what that's going to do is it's going to put this your label right here your equation right there uh so this 5.97 that's your slope uh your x is whatever's on the x is whatever's on your um, x-axis which is stretch um and then your y-intercept would be whatever your y inter like whatever that line crosses the the vertical axis um, it should be pretty close to zero on this lab because, um, right, if you if you don't apply a force to the spring, it shouldn't be stretched at all. Um, so, and then it's just basically missing the y equals. Uh, realize that in this case, y should probably be replaced with an f for force. So it should probably read like f is equal to 5.97 delta x because delta x is, um, is your stretch. But we'll talk about that uh, on Monday. So anyway um so yeah and then this number should be basically zero right so because again if you don't hang any mass on there so your equation is probably going to read um something like f is equal to 5.97 um and you can put it in as an x though it would be better if it was delta x but i don't expect that you're going to replace that and the reason it's okay to leave the x in your equation is because um, X is a pretty good variable for stretch, right? Because it's a distance how far you stretch the spring um, versus like, right, if I left it as a Y, if I left it as, you know, Y is equal to 5.97, right? That's not as great because like, what is Y, right? Like we don't, we didn't have a Y in this lab. And so uh, F is a much better one. So anyway, that you're, you're, Equation should probably look something like that. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, I hope you find this helpful.